How do you negotiate to buy a business? Do you go in guns blazing, ready for a fight? Or do you do it in a far more subtle way? This video will show you how. Like this video, subscribe to the channel, and tap the notifications bell so that YouTube can send you a notification the next time I release a brand new video. If you want to buy a business without risking any of your own cash, then click the information button up here at the top of the video and you can take my free online training course. So click the button, take the course, and let's get started. So Ed, tell me a little bit about your background and how you came to be one of the foremost experts on negotiation. Well, I, I used to be in the computer business. I sold computers for companies like IBM and Litton Industries. And uh, then I, I kind of dropped out and I, I went into show business and I became a movie and television actor. Okay. Which was great fun. And I did that for, I think, about 12 years uh, until I got to a point where I, I was disturbed by the passive, the, the actor is in a passive role in, in, in film. And I'm more of an active person. So I uh, took another jump and went, uh, um, I, I took the skills that I had from business and the presentational skills that I picked up as an actor and started giving seminars and speeches and uh, uh, writing books. And the next thing I knew, uh, I was a major uh, worldwide uh, negotiation expert. And here we are. So over what period was that? When did you start training people in negotiation? Uh, when did I start? Ni 1987. Right. Okay. 1987. Been a Fantastic. while. It has been a while. So <laughs> what would you consider would be the main mistakes that people make when negotiating? Well, the main mistakes are, are, are psychological mistakes it's all really negotiation is all about psychology and uh people tend to uh look at the situation as though they have no power that the other side is controlling the negotiation and that they better give in uh they talk themselves out of making a good deal they don't aim high they don't take their time and they don't set themselves up with options so that if the negotiation doesn't work out, uh, they can say, thank you very much. I'm going to do something else. So that in a nutshell uh, is an answer to your question. Yeah, as a, as a, as a pretty good summary. And in actual fact, this is what I say to, to my people, my clients all the time, is you've got to have several deals on the go so that if you have to walk away from one, it doesn't hurt too much. Is that what you mean as well? Yeah, I, I, I mean, people say to me, if, I could, if you could give me one piece of device about negotiating, what would it be? And without hesitation, my answer is always be willing to walk away. That doesn't mean you should walk away. But it means you have to have the mindset. You have to say, if I can't get my needs met, if I can't get a deal that is relatively satisfying to me, then I have to say, thank you very much, goodbye. And the only way I can really justify that is if I have options, alternatives, plan B, if you will, so mm -hmm. that if you and I can't work out a deal, uh, I have something else set up that I can, you know, I'm going to go and do that instead. If I don't allow myself that flexibility, then I'm stuck. And that's the worst position to be in. You don't want to ever be in a position where you feel you have to make the deal. You always want to be in a situation where you, you psychologically, you feel that you can, if necessary, walk away and go do something else. Yes. No, that's, that's very good advice. So how do you feel someone should approach a negotiation to buy a business and position themselves in such a way that the outcome that they want 
is most likely to happen or more likely to happen? Is there any positioning tips that you can oh, yeah, give? Yeah, yeah. Well, first of all, one of the things that many people do wrong in, any, in negotiations in general is they don't clarify for themselves what it is that they, they hope to get out of the negotiation. In other words, what will what do I define as a, satis, a satisfying negotiation? What will make me satisfied? Uh, what, what, what do I want to achieve? So if you're going to buy a business, you have to make it very clear uh, what your objectives are. And then you have to do something that hopefully we were all taught as children. Some of us maybe know, but you have to do your homework. And 95% of your success, if you're going to buy a business, 95% of your success will be determined by how much homework you do. How extensive your homework is. Uh, what you know you about as of, under, of understanding the seller's position? Absolutely. Or understanding the business? Understanding, understanding how they look at the negotiation. This is one thing I stress. We, we tend to be narcissistic. We're self-involved. And I look at the negotiation from my point of view. That's a mistake. You have to look at it from the point of view of the other person. What is it that they hope to get out of the deal? Uh, what are their options? Do they have alternatives? Maybe they don't, which would be great. You know, if, if they're desperate to sell their business, you need to know that. So you, you, you have to find all of that out in advance. And uh, that can be difficult, but not that difficult. If you're willing to be a detective, I, I think that negotiators are really detectives at bottom. And, and your job is to do what a detective does, which is to look for clues, ask questions. Um, if, if you're the one that I'm negotiating with, I have to ask you questions. And if you won't answer them, then I have to find other places to get that information. You have to be willing to find people who can give you the information that the person you're negotiating with will not give you. Now that might be their secretary, someone else in the business. Um, it's important to talk, if you're buying a business, go to the business, talk to the people, interview them. They'll tell you things. The people that you, you talk to uh, will not have the same sense of uh, being closed that they negotiated with because they don't realize that they're in a negotiation. So they'll tell you things. Uh, the internet is a wonderful place to get you know, information now. On, on, but uh, you shouldn't start a negotiation until you've really done your, your due diligence uh, and, and done your homework. Yeah, and sometimes industry gossip, you know, uh, people yeah. know each other in the same industry, don't they? And you can oh, yeah. you can ask around and maybe find that that, uh, that person's been trying to sell that business for years. Well, that's an important factor. See, that's why I say you have to, doing your homework. That's presumably one of the things that you're going to find out is that they've been trying to sell the business, um, that they haven't had any offers. Uh, how desperate are they? How do they need financially? Do they, what's their financial situation? Are, are they under financial stress? Uh, so, so I, a, a large part of any negotiation is going to be around price. So how would you suggest that someone interested in buying a business should approach price? And I, I have a, a methodology that I use uh, but I'd be very interested to hear what your approach would be. I'm interrupting your video with a very important message. If you are watching a video like this, it's probably because you're serious about buying a business. But watching free videos on YouTube will only take you so far. You need to take the next step. And the next step is a link that's somewhere on the screen up at the top, uh, which takes you through to our free video training. There's no cost whatsoever. You watch the free video training and that will give you some of the essential basics that you need. Now, if you get value from that, then I would invite you to be part of my next Fast Track program.
Now, the Fast Track program has been running for a couple of years now. We've had nearly 3,000 people around the world on the Fast Track program, and it's a Zoom program that you can attend from anywhere. Uh, it's broadcast from my living room to your living room, where I will teach you what you need to know to go and buy your first business. And there's a Q&A section at the end of each of the training sessions, so you can ask me all of your questions. Now, if you get great value from that, and you're really serious about buying a business, then there's my mastermind program, a 12-month program where we hold your hand through the business buying process so that you can buy your first company. And when you have, I'll invite you into our inner circle, which is exclusively for people who've bought their first business. So that's what we've got lined up for you. It's up to you whether you take the next step. Anyway, back to the video. The, the basic concept that applies to all negotiations is that you have to aim high. You have to aim high. So you want to offer less than you're willing to pay. Now, how much less? Well, hopefully a lot less. The, the, uh, the main question that I, I would concern myself with is, uh, am I being reasonable or am I being ridiculous? Now, if I'm being ridiculous, then I'm not gonna be taken seriously. So how do I determine if I'm being ridiculous? And there's a way, of, very simple way to do that. And that is to ask the question, can I come up with some good reasons to justify my offer? Mm -hmm. So if the business, if I'm offering $10 million um, and they're asking $20 million, can I present reasonable a reasonable justification for why I'm only offering 10? If you can come up with good reasons, then it's not ridiculous. So that's, that's the key. Can I come up with good reasons to justify my position? Simple. So I think that a lot of people in the business buying position in the negotiation are concerned about an outraged seller, an upset seller who says, I've been working hard at this business for 20 years. How dare you insult me? And they don't want that confrontation. So they probably don't go as low as they could do because they're concerned about that emotional response. What would you say to that? Well, it's fine to be concerned about it, but I think that people carry that too far and they start to do a whole thing in their head. That's why you have to have good reasons. So if the seller says, uh, how, could you, how dare you offer me only $10 million? Then you have to be prepared to come up with a good reason. Well, the reason I'm doing it is because of such and such. I've looked at the valuation of your business, blah, 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 da, da, da. And so you're not just uh, blowing smoke at them. You're, you're, you're giving them, you're showing them that you've thought this out. You're not trying to insult them. And then they have to come back and refute the evidence that you've presented to them in support of your position. Now, I, I, I want to say something, another, another way of looking at this question. I always believe that there are two negotiations that take place. There's the one that you and I have. So you want 20 million, I'm offering 10 million. Now, the other negotiation is the one that I have here. I have a negotiation with myself. You have a negotiation with yourself. And sometimes we lose that negotiation and then it's all over. You know, if I, if I start to say to myself, oh, they'll never accept my offer it's ridiculous, they'll be insulted, blah, 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 blah. I lost the negotiation. Mm -hmm. So I have to, uh, it's the old story about positive thinking. I have to think very, very um, uh, affirmatively. And uh, if I've done my homework and I, know, you know, and I know what I'm talking about, then I should be very confident about my position and uh, not talk myself out of it. Because if I've talked myself out of it, how am I gonna talk you into it? 
Yeah, so that's, I, that's I, a key. I, I, I see key this with. Um, sorry, there was a time delay there. I, I see this all the time with business buyers where they uh, spend days deliberating over the deal and they they work it through in their head so many times they start to put doubt in their own minds like you say they talk themselves out of it rather than just picking up the phone jumping onto a zoom call sitting down for a coffee with the seller and confronting the situation and i, I think there is a general sense in the uk at least that negotiating negotiating is is a is a little bit of a dirty word. It's not a very polite thing to do. Now you might have a different viewpoint on that because I think there are some cultural differences with the UK. But what would you say about that, Ed? I agree with you, and it's the same in the United States. I right. think that people there's a term called haggling. People say, "Oh, I'm hag." It's not negotiation. It's haggling. You know, how can you haggle with somebody? Uh, it, it has that kind of dirty connotation. And there again, it's, it's this internal negotiation. You've got to talk yourself out of that and recognize that negotiation is the oldest um, interpersonal system that human beings have. And this has been with us for tens of thousands of years. This is basic to who we are. Sorry for interrupting your video, but I wanted to introduce you to a great lawyer in the UK who can get your deals done for you. He's worked for 50 of my mastermind clients in the last few months alone. His name is John Andrews, and I've got his details right here in my little black book of contacts. You can phone him on 0345 241 2494, or you can email him on johnandrews.deallawyer at jmw.co.uk. UK. If you want someone who can get a deal done, he is your guy. So let's get back to the video. It's our birthright and we have a right to do it. And you have a right to try to negotiate the best deal for yourself. So to start becoming, uh, uh, feeling, you know, I, have to, I, I should feel shame, ashamed because I'm negotiating. That's ridiculous. Uh, you see that on a very simple level. If I, if I go into a market, and I want to buy a uh, container of milk. And the store wants, um, I don't know what, I, I don't buy milk, so I don't know what, $2 a mm -hmm. container. How many people will actually, as you're checking out, will actually say, hey, I, I, I'll offer you $1.50 for this. How many, nobody will do that because they're afraid if, I, if you do that, the person behind you is going to you know, say, what are you, what are you nuts? So that, the, the, the person at the register, cash register, is going to say, what are you, crazy? We're always worried about what somebody else is going to say. And I think that if you want to consider yourself a negotiator, you have to get rid of that whole attitude and, and recognize that you have a right to negotiate, that you have a right to do the best, make the best deal for yourself, and you have to aim high. So I, I always say that negotiators... Successful negotiators are optimists. They don't, they don't go into the negotiation saying, gee, uh, this is going to be a tough one. I probably won't do very well. Disaster. No, they, the successful negotiator says, I've done my homework. I know what I'm talking about. I have my ammunition, and I'm going to, and I'm going to do well. And it usually becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Very similar to working in sales. The, the positive, optimistic salesperson always sells more than the salesperson who thinks that they aren't going to sell anything. Well, it's the same thing. Negotiation, sales, same thing. So if you're a negotiator, you're selling your position. So the two overlap. So, Ed, in a situation where someone's listening to this who believes that they are an average negotiator. What would you say to them to help them upskill from being, uh, apart from reading your book, of course, from, from being an average negotiator to being an, being an excellent negotiator? I mean, what are, the, what are the steps that they need to take? Talk us through a process. All right, well, the difference between someone who is not a negotiator, who is not accustomed to negotiating, 
and someone who is, is that the negotiator understands a few basic rules. They're not a lot, but they're basic rules. They've been that way for millennium, millennia, um, and they are just as true today as they were 20 years ago, 50 years ago. So you have to understand those rules, which, are, you know, what I've already talked about, expect to do well, uh, do your homework, uh, be prepared to walk away, have alternatives, uh, listen, become a good listener. Uh, there's an article on my website called 10 Tips for Successful Negotiating. I mean, if all you do is, is pay attention to those 10 tips, you're gonna do well. It's not, it's not rocket science. But the, the funny thing is that even though it is really basically simple, I'm amazed at how many people who are uh, used to negotiating do a lousy job and don't follow the basic rules. Yeah, absolutely. So, and that's very reassuring that there might be as few as 10 things that you need to do to become really good at negotiating really? and not a thousand things. No. No, and, and it's not, another thing I emphasize, it's not about tricks. I mean, there are a lot of tricks in my book. I have, you know, uh, strategies, tactics, but when it comes down to it, it's not about tricks. It's, it's about a few basic principles. And if you stick to those principles, you're gonna do well. If you, if you ignore those principles, you're not, you're not gonna do well. So yeah, anybody, and by the way, uh, one, of the, one of the misconceptions that people have is that in order to be a successful negotiator, you have to be very aggressive, a type A personality. Donald Trump, you've gotta be, you know, uh, Boris Johnson, you gotta, that's not true. You can be a, a mild-mannered person, a quiet person, and do just as well if, if you, if in, your, if in your mind you have absorbed the, the main lessons. And I, in fact, I think that the best negotiators are not necessarily those who are very aggressive, but those who take a quiet approach and listen. I think listening is the most important skill that negotiators need to have. And most people don't do, most people don't listen. You so to, you here's to. the thing, Ed, if, if it is so straightforward, why are there so many bad negotiators? Or why do so many people feel as though they are bad at negotiating if the elements of what makes a successful negotiator are very simple? Why, why don't more people uh, pick up on how straightforward it could be? Well, you've already answered that question. It's a cultural thing. The culture, there's something, the culture has taught us that there's something sort of not quite right. You know, people who, who haggle, it's not quite right. Uh, I, I think it's a function of our own prosperity. Um, if you look back at the United States, for example, back in the, uh, the days of the uh, American Revolution, uh, there was a person who was called the Yankee trader. Uh, these people were tremendous negotiators. They didn't worry about, you know, am I allowed to negotiate? As it but what happened was that as we, as our lifestyles became, uh, we became more prosperous. Uh, we became less accustomed to negotiating for things. Mm -hmm. So a person will not go into the store and negotiate for the container of milk because they just don't, it isn't done anymore. So I, again, we have to get over that and, and recognize that it is okay and, and, uh, and do it. I, one of the examples I give in my book, and I, I, I was in a Japanese restaurant many years ago uh, with, a, with about five or five of us, uh, four friends of mine, and the waitress was just ignoring us. And we, we, weren't, we wanted to order. And the waitress was across the room and I yelled out, excuse me, miss, can you please come over here? And the four, my four companions, they all went, Ed, don't do that. Don't, you know, you, you, that's not, you shouldn't do that. And I said, why, why not? Why shouldn't I do that? 
That's, if I don't do that in life, if you don't, in life, if you don't put it out there and you're not assertive and you don't ask for what you need, you're going to die. I mean, that's, that's a basic principle of survival. And yet people have come to a point where they think that there's something wrong uh, with being assertive, that assertive people are, are somehow, uh, you know, they're, they're not nice people. But, but assertive doesn't necessarily mean that you're brash or you're loud. You know, you can be quiet oh. and assertive, can't you? Well, I, I make a distinction between being assertive and being aggressive. If, if, I, if I go after you and... I say, you know, to hell with Jonathan. I don't care what your needs are. All I care is my needs and I'm going to, that's being aggressive. But when I, when I go after my, I attempt to get my needs met, but at the same time, I'm respectful of your situation and I understand where you're coming from. That's being assertive. Mm -hmm. There's a big difference between the two. So I always tell people, be assertive. Don't be aggressive. Because when you're aggressive, that's when the other person is going to start to think that you're not dealing in good faith. Uh, they're going to get upset. They're going to be, you know, their ego is going to jump in there. So you want to avoid that. And the way so that can that, actually destroy the negotiation yeah. if, if you if you go in too strong. Look at it from their point of view. Mm. One of the most important principles that I teach is always consider how the other person is looking at the negotiation. So in the time that we've got left, what would, and it may well be a summary of what we've already said, but what would the, your top tips be? What would the, you know, what are the skill sets that our listeners need to develop to be really good at negotiation? You know, what are your parting, parting words of advice, Ed? All right. Always expect to do well. If you're buying a business, start offering less than you're willing to accept. Uh, always be sure that you have alternatives. Don't, don't be desperate to buy this business. If you can't get the business at, a, at a, a, a price and conditions that are acceptable to you, then why do it? Do something else. Um, learn how to listen. Ask what I call open-ended questions. Open-ended question is a question that can't be answered with a simple yes or no. Uh, how do you feel about this? You know, um, what's your, you know, what's your thinking about? It? You want to, you want to get the other person to open up, get them talking. I, I believe in doing as little talking as possible. Let the other person do most of the talking. Number one, they will tell you all their problems. They'll tell you, you know, what their weaknesses are, and why they need to make the deal, and they will like you. We like people who listen to us. So listening is very, very important. And then the other one is take your time. Uh, people in our culture are in a hurry. Everybody wants to get it over with. Be sure that you allot sufficient amount of time for the negotiation so that you're not in a hurry. Let them be in a hurry. I always, I always want to be in a situation where the other person is in a hurry because they're the one that's going to make the mistakes. If I take my time and I, you know, and I'm, I don't expect to get it done today, Fine, I, I'm going to be in the driver's seat. Great advice. Ed, thank you very much. You've been a wonderful guest, and I look forward to having you back on the podcast sometime in the future. Thank you. <laughs>